how you're doing. So, we're all being fed a bunch of myth sandwiches. And I'm sick of it. Plants have protein, but they're not complete protein. You need egg sacs. You need to eat egg sacs to gain muscle. We all know something ain't right with that. So today we're going to bring an interesting spin on the complete protein myth and actually discover that it's meat that isn't the complete protein. Holy shit. I am a vegan. You are a loser. So we've all heard the myth that plants do not contain complete protein. You have to combine various foods together. If you don't eat rice and beans together, you die. If you don't eat kale with strawberry jam, you're kidding yourself. So let's investigate it. Let's try to find the one plant food that doesn't have the complete amino acid profile and then we'll go from there. So we're in chronometer and I've added one food of each group. One fruit, one vegetable, one nut, one seed, one grain, one bean. Shut up, I know that's not a real grain, it's a super seed. You're a super loser, shut up. <laughs> and one meat, one meat. Hi, meat. So first, let's discover the amino acid that bananas lack. So we're looking at the protein here, and so far, it has every single one. So that's a complete protein. Celery, every single one. Walnuts, holy shit. Pumpkin seeds, yep, that's a holy shit as well. Quinoa, every single one. Lentils. Yeah, that's all of them. Chicken penises. That's got all of them. So, so far in my travels, I haven't been able to find a plant that doesn't contain each one. Like, there's probably the odd one, like a straw fickle bush leaf out in Japan or something that doesn't have its missing one. There could be, but pretty much when you look, investigating for yourself, seeing what's in these foods, each plant has every single one. So we start there. So the meaties, they really want to believe this one. They're sticking to it. They're sticking to it. So they've realized that each food, each plant food has all the amino acids, but they think, yeah, but it's kind of low in, in that one. Now, first of all, let's not pretend that any of us know exactly how much of each amino acid we need. There is no research on it. There might be some. Shut your mouth. But what there is plenty of research on is that you can get too much of some. So we got five studies here showing that too much methionine increases cancer risk. All this stuff, we're just, we're not going to get into it. Just read the titles here. A review of methionine dependency and the role of methionine restriction in cancer growth control and lifespan extension. So in this study, they looked at methionine restriction and cancer growth and the more you feed these rats methionine the more cancer they get the younger they die you restrict the methionine it extends their life holy shit we made a correlation here in this one they restrict the methionine as an anti-tumor treatment and it's because the cysteine and methionine are sulfur containing amino acids very acidic and sulfury. Have you ever farted and it smelled like a sulfur nightmare? That's that methionine not being digested and you're about to die. And so are the people around you. Put a cork in it, asshole. Lowered methionine ingestion is responsible for the decrease in rodent mitochondrial oxidative stress and protein and dietary restriction possible implication for humans. <laughs> so the less methionine you eat, the less oxidative damage. Oxidation. Free ret, my battery's running low, you piece of shit. Low methionine content of vegan diets may make methionine restriction feasible as a life extension strategy. So it's not just one study pointing to it. This has been done hundreds of times, especially in the rodents, because it's kind of hard to tell. You start a study on humans, and then you gotta wait a hundred years. And last one, methionine inversely related to maximum lifespan in the heart of mammals. Last time I checked, the heart 
is slightly important to keeping us alive. So if we go back to chronometer, we switch things to a 2000 calorie diet. 2000 calories of bananas have 0.2 grams of methionine. 2000 calories of celery, that's got to be an enjoyable day. 0.6 grams of methionine. Walnuts have 0.7 grams of methionine. Pumpkin seeds 2.1, quinoa 1.7, lentils 1.2, and chicken. What does chicken have? 6.5. That is a multitude of six. And that's just chicken. Let's add some Atlantic wild-caught salmon. 8.3 grams. Holy shit, how much do eggs have? Eggs have 5.1. I thought it was gonna be so much higher and it would be so dramatic, but it wasn't. Damn it. So bringing it all together here, the people that are saying plants do not have complete protein because they're low in some. I've just showed you that they're low in the ones that cause cancer and make you age super fast. That's a good thing. We're doing good things here. So they're low in some, but that makes them incomplete. So I turn the tables on you. Meat is too high in some, and therefore incomplete. Because a complete protein amino acid formulation would not cause cancer or make you age like a diseased marmot. So if you look at salmon, it looks complete. It has every single amino acid on the surface. If you don't look into this shit, you're like, oh, it's good, complete protein. But no, it's too high. It's too high in methionine and you will die because of it. So it, how is that a balance if you can't sustain your life properly? So protein is something you just, you don't wanna eat too much of. It does aid you. It triggers that mTOR. I still haven't fully researched that one. I have no idea what I'm talking about when I say it but still it does it and it's bad. So too much protein ages the shit out of you and diseases your body up. That's the saying. But not getting enough protein also is terrible. I just feel so shit on the low protein. And it wasn't until I increased that, not only did muscles start forming, but my brain started getting more balanced. I was happier. I had more energy. And you think like, oh, we only run on sugar and fat using that for energy, but protein does something to the brain. It makes you happier and gives you energy. Even though you're not using it as fuel, you're using it in mystical hippie ways. So I think that's about it. I just wanted to show you that yes, plants are low in certain amino acids, but that's a good thing because it extends your life and meat is too high in those ones. They kill you. So, and backed by science. I backed it. I backed it up, baby. Back it like it's hot. Now there is a dark side to this whole thing for vegans, and I will make another video on it. And it's for the bodybuilders who supplement protein, even though it's vegan, but we will dive right into that one. And that's dangerous, and meat eaters probably just as safe as the vegan super protein boys. It's like equal balanced losers. So we're done. We're done here. Thanks for watching the video. Consider giving it a thumbs up if you liked it. How is this an option? They're allowed to thumb down the videos now? Thumbs down. If you have scratched a lion's anal gland. Okay. We're done. We're done. Are you vegan yet? Sure. You can get them. They, they lower your methionine in the body. We did a study on it. It's just vegans who wore this shirt lived an average of seven years longer. So, well, consider doing that if you want to live longer. So, we're done. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.